Hi everyone, welcome back to another day, day two of the Power of a Grateful Heart Challenge with Katie Wiedrich. Yay! Yeah. So yesterday was really rich, so much from the Lord, so much to process. And I'm sure that all of you enjoyed doing your homework. <laughs> I know that I had quite an interesting time doing it. And um, I did get some five characteristics Hi, in there. Welcome back. To <laughs> Let me just, uh, two, I have um, to just do something how quickly we here. Okay. Oh, the lovely technical. Yes, okay, we're fine now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're going to do day two. We don't know what the Holy Spirit is going to be doing, but we're going to be trusting in Him. And uh, one of the things that we were thinking is um, tomorrow's uh, broadcast, what would what uh, I would encourage you to do is to write any questions that you have for Katie and in the chat and I will be following those and I'll record them and we'll post them to Katie so that she'll she'll know them ahead of time. Although she's the expert, she can just put it up the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anyway, so thank you, Lord, for a wonderful time. And I'll just turn it over to Larry. And... What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we commit this time and all of our hearts mm -hmm. to the indwelling power and majesty of who you are, great I am, El Shaddai, ancient of days, the many dimensions and realms and realities of who you are to us, in us and through us, Lord, we bless the breath of wisdom and revelation that we know is on Katie and on everyone at whatever degree, Lord, we bless alignment of our focus and awareness to just sink into everyone in the room. Lord, we thank you that you already have delivered us from the annoyances, the chaos, the hardship and toil. And Lord, we just acknowledge every good thing that is in every single one that is called on your name. We bless the majesty we crown this day, Lord. We bless this day to be crowned with your dignity, your worth, your love, your splendor. For your namesake, Jesus, we trust you to lead as the good shepherd that you are. Amen, amen, amen. Yay, Katie. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me yesterday. Hey, I oh, wanted to awesome. uh, just shout out to some of you. I went and did a just a quick uh, follow through on on what I had done, uh, and there were so many folk on there that I really care about. And I, I, you know, I of course I can't see who's on, mm -hmm. um, and your comments. So I don't want you to think I was ignoring you uh, at all. But I'm grateful that you joined us. Uh, I just wanted to say um, a couple of words. Uh, if I may, is it okay just to say a couple of Be words free. for people you that are I are absolutely know? free. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so Barb, I, Barb Simmons, if you're on today, mm -hmm. I want you to know that really have been carrying you, your mom, your dad, along with uh, other people in the faith community around the loss of Liz Holly. And uh, boy, I know that one landed hard and I've been keeping you close just to let you know, and you know, and I know that the, the loss of a, of a, of a kindred is is extraordinary and i under, i know that liz was so dear to your heart so anyway just want you to know keeping you close and then dan chapel who uh you know some of you really need to meet dan he is one of the dearest dearest um prophetic voices that i know he is genuine sweet-spirited um open-hearted generous and Dan, I, I can't get over that you would, and I'm not surprised because you and Larry have been friends for a long time. Uh, is Dan on today? I'm not sure yet, but he'll, he'll oh, probably okay. see the repeat, 
for the yeah. replay. Okay, because I don't know if I have permission to say what I'm going to say without asking him first. Um, yeah. so when he, if he pops on, let me know. Okay. And uh, if he's on tomorrow, then I think I have a word, just a, yeah. a comment. Okay. But I, I want to ask his permission before we went. <laughs> yes. Yes. One of his more unusual stories. He's like Larry. <laughs> he has unusual stories. He does. That's why I love he him. He's real. I know. He is so real. All right. Um, Larry, Jacqueline, I have yes. something for you today. Um, and I was hearing it yesterday and earlier again today. Uh, I'm setting this up for some people that don't know your relationship with Bob Jones, but uh, you know, we, we all had the privilege in, in, in mm -hmm. our community in the kind of thing with Dennis and I and those close to us. Uh, Bob was, was family, Bob Jones to mm -hmm. all of us. And he, um, he called Jacqueline a songbird. He called Joanne McFadder a songbird and he, he identified Jacqueline as a songbird. Uh, and we recognize that any of you that know Jacqueline understand that's what she is and that she has abilities to go um, to the third heaven and bring back what I called a few months ago, the now and the new, the now song and the new song. Uh, but I recognize that there were some things that were hindering her and she was, I, I could see in the spirit, she was trying to soar into the third heaven, but was getting caught in, in the hydro lines, uh, which is the power grid here on earth. And she was getting, she was trying to go, but the power grid here, and, and, and we need those power grids. We have to be, um, you know, like <laughs> there's an important part of how we have, we, we wouldn't be having these calls without those mm -hmm. power grids and all of that. But nevertheless, some of the nests, some of the parts of that power grid were entangling you and you weren't able to get out to the third heaven and come back with the now and the new. And I believe that you're being um, disentangled so that you can head all the way up and then come all the way back unentangled to release the now and the new. And uh, this is why it's important. I believe, and I, his name's not going to come to me. You guys will know him. You probably heard this before. It's corroborated in, si in, in science, but one of our Oh, golly. I'm sorry. His name isn't coming to me, but he's a prophetic voice teacher. But he talked about the birds as well. And I don't know if you all know this, but uh, it's the sound of the songbirds that waken the grass and the flowers. It isn't the sun that wakens the grass wow. and all the growing things. It's the sound of the songbirds. Wow. Wow. Did not know that. Yeah. Do you know, Ray um, Hughes? that's it. Thank you. I knew you'd know it. See, yeah, you're he's part of our, he's part of our big tribe or we're part of his big tribe as Bob. That I, yes. All of it. Yes. And it was Ray. I, um, hmm. I had heard it in science somewhere and then Ray said it in one of his sessions. Wow. I think it might've been at HCF at Hamilton Christian fellowship when he hmm. came to Hamilton a few years ago. Nevertheless, he said it, it's corroborated in, si in science. And um, I am one of those people that wait, although we're on a busy street, uh, I wait for the song of the songbirds in the morning. Uh, I would rather be woken by a songbird than an alarm. And, uh, you know, but you really are crucial, you songbirds, to the growing things and for life to come forward. In fact, they say that if they put songbird songs in greenhouses, the plants grow better. Wow. And that's something. <laughs> yes. So Jacqueline, I've said to you before that I really do mean that we need you to be able to go. And I mean, we need, we need you to be able to go unhindered and come back unhindered. It's one thing to get there. It's another thing to come back with it unhindered. And I want that for you. And I believe that you're entering into a season where it's going to be easier for you to go, get it, retain it, and come on back. Yes. Yeah. Katie, thank you so much for sharing that. It really is confirmation on so many levels. Really oh, beautiful. Is. Yeah. Good news. Yes. Yay. Yes. Uh -huh.
that blesses me so much. <laughs> yeah. mm. Yay. Well, how okay. many of you, like me, had trouble filling out five things uh, of the character? <laughs> <laughs> I confess that I went to Dennis this morning at, at uh, 9.30 and said, I'm stuck. I can't find five. And I, I assigned the challenge. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> But did did most of you do it? Did most of you sit down e either with help of friends or spouses or you were able to hear clearly from Holy Spirit and you were able to find five ways that you reflect the character of Christ, the Trinity? Um, I hope um, you did. Um, I'll just trust that you did. Yes. I'm looking yeah, and at they'll, they'll respond in the comments, even on the replay. Sure. We bless them to respond sure. on, the, on the comments and stuff. It was a challenge for me, I have to confess, too. It was, um, it's a bit un, unnerving um, because, again, it's, it's coming sometimes against the default of our own self-condemnation or, self, or lack of self-acceptance and all that stuff. So... It's good in that way because it's removing any vain imaginations of, of any, kind of, any kind of falsehoods of what I believe about me or have believed about me for years. And it's like, okay, God, what do I? And so one of them, one of them, <clears throat> I'll just go with one. Yes. Um, for me, you know, asking, he, he came out, I, I, he did come up with five, but I probably have to rehearse and sit on the Lord, sit, sit with the Lord to figure out what, what the rest of them wanted. But one of them was kindness. And, um, oh. and he said, it's, it's like a flickering flame. <laughs> it's like, Oh, okay. A little bit of a correct, but at least it, there was an affirmation. There wasn't any, don't, you only have a flickering flame. You're only a smoldering flax away from me. And nothing like that, obviously, because it's Papa, right? It's Abba. It's not going to be that way. But but it's a good, um, it's just all around good because he affirmed that it's even there flickering. Because for me, just with the struggle that I have with certain things of wrestling through, with some of the power lines and everything else that goes on in the natural, all of us, um, you lose it because of um, disillusionment, disappointment, different things. I've uh, sometimes I, I think that even generationally and in my family line, there's a there's an extreme kindness on my on my family line, but because of the layers of pressure and powers that aren't Christ have kind of tried to snuff out that characteristic that is actually he who is with us, right? So that's cool. So it's Jacqueline, a really good practice. Oh, I think it is. Jacqueline, and you got your five? Where'd she go? I don't know. Where did she go? Did she get transported and left us? <laughs> yeah, she went to the third. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you to go that soon. <laughs> no, I didn't go, actually. I just took myself off of view. <laughs> right. I'm were not you, going anywhere. <laughs> were you able to um, find five? I think I found about three. <laughs> oh. I think. Hmm. Yeah, it is hard. That's where I was. I was at three. Now, some of them may be some, some things that are so... Um, <laughs> Now, some of you that know me would laugh that I didn't catch this one, but Dennis said, well, you're a servant. And it was like, oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't even see that. You know what I mean? And in yeah. part, I think it's because it's, um, I've, I've done it for so long. Yes. Do it. But then to be reminded that that's a nature of Christ. I mean, I, I do that when I go down. I mean, I, I'm aware of it in some aspects, but... Mm -hmm. I, w I wouldn't have thought to put that on the list. I was wow. like, oh, okay, makes it easy. So wow. it may be for some of you, things that you reflect so naturally mm -hmm. that you don't recognize it as being him That's in you. Good. You know? So there, mm -hmm. there you go. Now, um, <laughs> one of the practices that I've had uh, that was pre-existing the journals of a thousand gratitudes, and I'll just recap for yesterday, that I do keep journals of gratitudes. I fill, depending on the size of the journal, sometimes I get uh, 
uh, 2,000 in one in one journal, depending on the size of them. But I do uh, keep the practice of writing out journals of 1,000 gratitudes, filling them up, and I'm you know one quarter the way through my ninth now. Uh, and and they're 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 full of little things and big things. Just on that note, it doesn't have to be big things. Like it, one day I came back and I, I was um, planting pollinators in my in my back gardens this year to cultivate you know more of the pollinators because we need them, and I, I saw bees up to their butts in blossoms and you know like honeybees and just with their whole little faces and just their little bums sticking out of, of blossoms. And I just thought, oh, that is bliss. And so then I, you know, that the next morning I wrote, bees up to their butts and blossoms. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, it, it doesn't have to be overly profound. It can be all of the little things that, that make you happy. If, if anyone were to look at these, and I didn't write them for anyone to look at, uh, there would be every year that would be the lilacs. Every year it would be putting up, you know, Christmas lights or all of the things that historically and every year make me grateful. And then all the bits and bobs in between. You know, some of you really need to meet Dan. He is. I don't know so, what that was. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, now, one of the practices that I had was to recognize who the influencers have been in our lives and be grateful for the influencers. We have, in, in a positive way. You know, most of us, we talked a little bit yesterday about having to come out from some of the negative influences of our family of origin. But how many of you can think of one or two individuals in your lifetime if you were struggling that were the people that anchored you through hard times. Mm -hmm. I think, Larry, do you have in, in your in your difficult years, were there one or two faces that stuck out or people that stuck out that you could say, boy, their being in my life kept me going when I might not have gone on? Oh, countless if i if i sit down i mean i stop and think about you know as we were alluding to me being in the hospital countless um, amount of people praying for me praying for us but but ultimately the the biggest gratitude is my my precious jacqueline like going through all of that horrible pit you know dark night of the soul literally dark night of the whole life um you know she'd have to carry me to the bathroom because I was in so much pain with the Crohn's yeah. and, and how she came every day to the hospital and, and she just endured so much and you know, you can't help but be grateful. But, but then, you know, so, you know, that's, she's the biggest obviously other than Jesus, but, but in the natural, um, influence, I mean, that's you and Dennis. And your family has been been large in our life like like you got to know dennis particularly you know me me being infused with the prophetic from toronto was was glorious but mm -hmm. god sent you guys into my life right at a specific pivot that i needed because there was no other agent to believe in me and so so when dennis kind of did that whole fatherly hug type of thing for me and and affirmed me as a son affirmed me not as a prop per se but as a son and 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 really awoke you know talk about a songbird in the sense of uh, awoke the authentic in me to believe in me like if somebody believes in me wow there must be something real in me that god's saying to this person and 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 so that was a large um pivotal profound time of 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 meeting you guys and and just our whole relationship has been drenched with encouragement drenched with influence and drenched with with life lessons that you couldn't get in bible college you couldn't get in revival meetings you can't get that even in some home group things 
it's all good and it's got its place. But when, when you're influenced by, um, that, and then, you know, another one I have to throw out there in adoration into, um, you know, the glory realm is, is my mom, Mm -hmm. my, my natural mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my natural mom. I mean, in my, in my early years of being an absolute, (laughs) sorry, but idiot from 10 years old till 27, I started doing drugs when I was 10 years old, started doing LSD when I was 11. And so I'm literally crushing my whole childhood. And if it wasn't for my mom's unconditional acceptance and love for me, I wouldn't be alive. I know it, I know it, I know it. And she wasn't born again. She wasn't, in a sense, they were all maybe nominal believers, Christians, Anglicans, whatever, thank God for whatever, whatever flickering flame. But her, her embrace of me carried me through the most psychological, damaging, destructive, death-infused time of my, my childhood, my, my teenage years and everything else. And if it wasn't for the unconditional nurture of a mother's heart, of a mother's love, um, and I get it. Not everybody's got that. And she wasn't perfect. Trust me, she wasn't. But but there was the underlying invisible arms of, 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 of authentic love that to the best of her ability, because she wasn't skilled. She only had big grade four education. So she wasn't so she didn't wasn't able to read a bunch of books on how to be a mom and how to how to look after a wild, crazy one like me. Right. But she she outshone any limitations naturally by being able to endure me (laughs) able to put up with um where i was psychologically mentally and going after drugs trying to self-medicate and all the crazy things that all that lifestyle hits if it wasn't for my mom i wouldn't be here so i am exceedingly grateful for that kind of influence and in some ways katie that's the way you are to us in our hearts you, you i mean you're not just to us you're like that to a ton of people and my last one i'll shut up and let give it back to you is ultimately bob jones uh-huh. like yeah. i mean and there's many many more there's paul cox or you guys there's so many good influencers yeah. in our lives we, we are rich with friends we are rich all these years but bob spiritually the lord was able to unlock a level of affirmation just by hearing him when i first saw him in morningstar years and years before we had ever met him through you guys um, i'm hearing him on the stage and i'm thinking oh my god everything that he's getting i'm getting it's like such kindred um kindred things and and what that is like okay i'm not losing it i'm not lost and and so that influence outrageous gratitude that 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 god is so kind to be able to interlock and interweave even if it's just from a distance even if it's just it's like all of these kisses from you know like the kisses of his you know the kisses of your mouth whatever all of these kisses to influence us in a good way, even in the dark times, you know, so. Yeah. 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 Those are the things that I think we need to recognize and bring forward. Uh, So I, this was a long time ago, but I took the time to write letters to people that had influenced me in my childhood. We had a neighbor when a, a neighbor when I was growing up and they moved away at one point, but her ability, honestly, uh, we lived in a bit of a haphazard household and my mom loved us, but it was, um, you know, my mom just had her little funky doodle ways of uh, doing life and being, and our next door neighbor was a little bit closer to June Cleaver than my mother was. And uh, <laughs> so uh, hanging out there was a treat. Their home was always tidy, always tidy. And, and, Oh gosh, it was, she was just a very different woman. 
uh, and one time my mom was in the hospital, so we would go next door in the mornings uh, before we had to go to school. My dad would take us next door. And laying on her, on, on their sofa, my little brother and I, I watched her and she, she took orange juice in orange juice glasses. I didn't even know that there were orange juice glasses. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, she took juice into her children, into her three daughters to wake them up in the mornings. Wow. And I remember at the time thinking, if I ever grow up and have kids, I'm going to do that. And then later after, you know, we were married, we had children and our children became school age. I started to take them juice in the mornings and then breakfast in bed. And I don't remember how long it lasted. I think it lasted for a few years. Um, uh, Maybe it only lasted for six months and it felt like a few years, however long it lasted, (laughs) you know. But uh, I wrote to her. She had moved, they'd moved a couple of times, but I found her address and wrote her a thank you note to thank her for the way she influenced me and that I took that piece of her forward into my life. And I think those are the things that you can actively do. What even in your past, even when your past was troubled, did you learn from somebody and did you take it forward into your own life and then live your life out of those gifts? So I think if some of you, know, some of you, some of us that are our age in our, our 60s, There's probably not too many of those left around. But if you're still at the age where you can write or send a note or make a call to neighbors, influencers, school teachers, whoever you still might be able to, I think it's good practice. It just helps you recognize that we're all a little bit of who we were influenced by. That's what I think. And I think it's just good practice to stay thankful for that take the time to acknowledge it because i think what it does is it helps us um we retain a sense of humility for one thing that what i have in me isn't just because i had it innately i learned it from someone else so is that raven really loud on your yeah kind of but hey let me chase him away (laughs) hold on i bought a super soaker (laughs) Uh, mama's got a super soaker (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the poor this raven so won't see what's coming to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Katie on the warpath with a super soaker. <laughs> oh, so who who was your main influencer, you think, Jacqueline? One of well, the I main think, ones. I think for a lot of us it's probably our our parents in the beginning influencing mm-hmm. everything that we do and just how we perceive life. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, just the, the, the leaders in our lives, I guess. And of course our spouses, mm-hmm. 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 main influences too. Yeah. yeah. I love the idea of writing letters to, to people mm-hmm. and it really, it really does challenge us and will bring us to that place of humility. Like you said, Katie, I just, I love that. How yeah. is that poor raven? Did you soak its feathers? <laughs> Do you know what? I bought a super soaker. It was a compaction one. I filled it up <laughs> with water and it had a leak. I was so disappointed. Oh, no. <laughs> I sent it back. So now I have to go and <laughs> do my human scarecrow thing. And I took uh, the bird feeder down. So there we go. It should be quieter. <laughs> so there's that. Now, here's the other thing that um, I find myself being a bit puzzled at when I'm in churches, and I talk about this, but how many of you have cultivated gratitude towards your angels? Mm. Ah, I definitely haven't, because it's not brought up in church. You're just oh not God, even no. aware. I know, and I just think, my gosh, okay, so if you had house help, you know what I mean? If you were of the, um, income bracket that you could have daily or weekly or Mm bi-weekly house Mm -hmm. help, would you not thank them? Absolutely. If you didn't, then I'm going to come smack you. Um, (laughs) She will. And help you, honestly, because that would be entirely rude to have help and not thank them. Yes. Your mama didn't Mm -hmm. raise you, right? Uh, You know, but when you think about it that way, you're thankful. but how many of us cultivate thanking our angels? Hmm. Wow. And they're with us all day long. And they have to see all the dumb stuff. 
<laughs> I think, oh my gosh, I owe my guy or girl or whomever like an extraordinary amount of things. First of all, they've been with us from the very beginning. Our personal angels have been with us from the mm -hmm. whole beginning. They know our story yeah. as well as we know our story and yeah. probably better. And they know it from the perspective of heaven because it isn't as if they're coming with us and saying that, that they're as blind as we are to where we're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. like they actually have been given a blueprint of our original design and where we're meant to be. And those wonderful, wonderful beings are not only keeping us safe, but working with Papa to help get us in the right direction. So good. And that we don't acknowledge them to me is quite extraordinary. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree. That is that is something. Thank yeah. you <laughs> for reminding us to do that. That is so important. Yeah, and, and even with that, you're going to have to go over some hurdles, people generally, because of our evangelical upbringing, you know, they don't worship angels, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And, you know, it is what it is. I mean, just because you acknowledge them or appreciate them doesn't mean you're worshiping them. It just means okay. that in a sense, like you say, you're, you're giving glory and honor to God for allowing and, and, and designing these beings to help us on our walk in our journey in our hard times. They, they minister to Jesus. So it's not, an, it's not unbiblical that they're around us all the time. They're there to not dash our foot. They're there to, mm -hmm. to strengthen us. To have, so it's like, thank you, God, for these angels. Thank you, angels that you're, you're, and, and I think it's completely permissible and, and beneficial um, just to help cultivate our hearts of gratitude and cultivate that supernatural existence we live in. We're acknowledging again every good thing that is in us. Well, guess what? The kingdom of God is in you, and those that includes how many ever angels are assigned to you according to your design, according to your mandate, according to his mandate with you, yes. all that stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I really am asking you to move past, as Larry said, religious barriers. We ought to be, we ought to be thankful for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Georgette, if Georgette, if you're on here again today, um, you do know that I have my own relationship with nature. I've talked about that with her group, and thankfully they didn't kick me out. Um, mm. But, you know, if we can be thankful for flowers, if we can be thankful for food, if we can be thankful for beauty, why on earth can we not be thankful and give thanks mm -hmm. to angels? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, how many of you, like, I, you might think this is entirely weird, but I think, I think, our dog for being our dog for living with us he could run away he will mm -hmm. probably have as good a life somewhere else as he's got here maybe that's why he doesn't run away because he's besides being entitled he is somewhat clever um do you know what i mean but i get down on the ground with toby probably once a week and mm -hmm. um and probably more often than that and just say thank you for being our pal thank you for all the comfort that you give dennis thank you for just your quirky little endearing ways. And I get down and say it to his face and I say it in his ear. Um, I used to say that to Joshua's dog, Tucker. I say that to my, all the, um, the dogs that my adult children have now. I get up close and personal and whisper in their ear that I'm grateful that they're in my life. Now, um, because there are so many things that give life and add to us that we ought to be exuberant in our gratitude we ought to be so if you've got a cat if you've got a bird just be thankful give them give them acknowledgement acknowledge what it is they do for you uh you can be so aware and alert to um um beauty so i'm going out on a limb larry you're a limb Hello. guy and so i'm going out on the limb because i can hear the poplars uh uh, doing their little poplar dance here. Poplars are trees and they're leaves, and that's. Well, they're me. not spiritual beings you're talking about. I'm sorry, I just kind of. Right. Yes, thank you. 
not the angels called poplar hill mm. these are I'm, I'm i'm back and forth i'm going to be back and forth between nature and angels i think for the next little bit mm. but uh, uh we were in a meeting one time in um in in the carolinas somewhere some really fancy pants resort that this meeting was being held in and and had some time off and we'd already had autumn in um where we live but because it was south it was it was like a second crack at autumn and there were oak trees and we were on a bicycle ride and there were this stand of beautiful beautiful oak trees and there really was no wind it was just a day on you know this hour and a half on a bike on bikes we're cycling around and went by these beautiful stand of oak trees that were in full color and it took kind of took my breath away. And on the way back, on the way back, I called out to the tree and I said, thank you for your beauty. And I felt in the spirit that I heard it say, you're welcome. And all of a sudden its leaves started to shake wow. and I, we got covered in oak leaves. It was if Come on. in recognizing its beauty and its majesty yeah. on the way back, when I said thank you, it said you're welcome, and all of these leaves came down. So, you know isn't... Mm. go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was just thinking of um, like people who would have problems believing that would have to think of Jesus Christ, even when he cursed the fig tree. Like the trees have life and. Yeah they are subjected to us and we we can communicate and it sounds like the oddest strangest thing but when you think of jesus doing that so i have yeah. no problems believing that the tree responded that way mm -hmm. yeah. i actually have a similar thing you know we talk to plants and all that stuff yeah. we all know that and i have a similar thing going on with some plants out there in the backyard <laughs> it's like yeah. a communication thing going on because i really believe life here's life, mm -hmm. you know? Well, yeah. and, and, and to me, it's Romans eight, you know, all of creation yeah. is, is, is groaning, waiting for the revealing of sonship in us. Why? So that our words, our redemptive, co-creative, co-redeeming words can unlock the nature to be what their original design is to be. We're coming into awakening to our original design according to the eternal purpose. Yes. What is their ultimate purpose to be a part of responding to heaven invading earth? They're going to be recipients of it. So in a sense, I think it's, in a sense, biblically permissible to awaken to what we really are and what we really can do that the effect of thanksgiving, the effect of appreciation, the effect of gratitude from a supernatural part of us, from, yes. the, the, from the new creation aspect of we're one with the, the source. We're one with the source. So if we're speaking with the source to these trees or to the animals and stuff like that, could we be bringing a redemptive healing release to the DNA and the, the molecules? Because everything on a subatomic level has got some level of its life in its own glory. And we're able to, in a sense, what if we could reconfigure their vibration? I don't want to get too airy-fairy, but, but everything's got a vibration. So I was thinking this morning, what even with gratitude, as we are setting our intention to be in gratitude we're we're reconfiguring our vibration because you know negativity has a vibration yeah you know look at look at the world like the 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 we see the outer bombastic vibrations of violence and riots and all our stuff but it's sourced from in here what if what if we can execute our dominion as sons of god to loose and it's i mean heart math is like that they they do that they they literally drop down into that realm of gratitude appreciation and love collectively and they've even got records of where they've they've put at bay violence in certain regions and stuff like that so what if we the body of christ yes. could collectively 
come in with all things common, one accord to awaken gratitude bathed with supernatural presence and power and and I think that that's part of the the, the design of, of of this awakening this reformation so that we could actually be co-redeeming co-re co-regions co-creating heaven's vibration if you will heaven's sound to heal the land mm-hmm. big time yeah I I I try to make a practice of doing that where we are geographically, um, you know, uh, we don't get a lot of trees in Western, this part of Western Canada. The trees that we do have are often like aspens and poplars. Uh, and I had been missing maple trees. I, did, I, you know, I didn't even know maple trees didn't grow out here until I got out here and found out there's no maple trees. And so I was kind of, in a way, a little bit missing what I had. And I thought that's a bad way to live. So that's when I started to get grateful for the trees that we had just around the corners where my clothesline is. And I was taking a basket of clothes to peg out. This was one day a year or two ago. It was after my experience with the oak tree. Um, I think it was the following spring. And there's a little aspen near my clothesline and it was a perfectly still day here. There were, there was no breeze. And this is little Aspen and I just stood beside him and I said, thank you for being an Aspen in my garden. Thank you. And its leaves started to move. I had ignored that Aspen tree countless times. I'm out here two, three times a week, pegging out clothes, winter and summer. And uh, I, I saw, I mean, I saw him countless times, but never acknowledged him. And then when I did on a perfectly still day, its leaves started to move. Now, what wow. is that except the real deal? Yeah. Yes. No, and, and I think it's what you're saying. I think it is the redeemed sons of God honoring creation. Mm-hmm. And we have, I, I think that Christians um, have been amongst the worst uh, about stewarding creation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with Hal Lindsey's The Late Great Planet Earth and with end time theology that may or may not be on. I, when I came to faith, I came into this group that, that believed that it was all going to get yeah. burned up, torn up, whatever. And what people wouldn't even buy into recycling because what's the point? We're not going to be here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think it's that absence of stewardship and gratitude for what the earth has to offer us mm-hmm. that we have contributed to the damages done. And I mm-hmm. think we all have somewhat of a responsibility to try to repair that and to redeem it as in our part. And thankfulness is one way. So I don't want you to think that I'm entirely off, but um, you know what it is. No, I think who to I, me, I think it's, it's spot on on so many levels. And, and, and what I love about this Katie is that, you know, I'll brag on you. We're never supposed to brag on ourselves, but I'll brag on you because many, well, nobody would know here probably, maybe a few, of of the mantle that was given to you from Bob Jones. Mm-hmm. And so, so what we see with Bob's stewardship of that mantle isn't the way you're stewarding it, and it doesn't need to be because you're authentically you and Bob is authentically him. Mm-hmm. But I love the aspect of what you're conveying to us you're bringing the prophetic out of the the what I dub the prophetic fantasy, and you're bringing it down into prophetic, pragmatic wisdom, mm-hmm. and and how to steward our revelatory lifestyle <clears throat> with the spirit and the earth the merging and the converging we've always heard the merging of the uh-huh. word and the spirit what about the spirit and the world what about the merging and converging of of wisdom prophetic wisdom that bob moved in massive massive and i think that that that's an attribute that i see in you is like your design is able to bring forth the revelatory deep and make it pragmatic for us living in this 
you know, as Mark Dupont is like the dirty now and now or whatever, the earthly, the, 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 the temporal realm isn't yeah. evil. The temporal realm isn't going to be judged by God. The temporal realm, God said it is good, right? He said everything is good. He never retracted anything saying that it wasn't good. And what he took out of the earth that wasn't good was our sinful nature and he destroyed him who had the power of death. So those things have been cleared away. He's part of the Red Sea. So his still burning eternal intention and declaration, it is good. It is good. So why wouldn't we harmonize heaven and the you know, heavenly identity, heavenly reality with, with natural identity and see real redemptive supernatural kingdom reality invade and and be be true healers of the earth now we know i mean you know we're we're, we're going down probably <laughs> we're stretching and challenging some mindsets in a sense because we're not we're not pushing tree hugging environmentalism from from those regimes that maybe started out in a good intent but it's just being hijacked like many things are being hijacked by nefarious agendas that's not what we're talking about we're talking about our natural our supernaturally natural ability to partner with wisdom himself yes that knows all things that is is revealing to us that there is relationship between heaven and earth or why would he have created it for us and yeah. i think that this is further to the whole scripture that talks about the manifestations of the sons of god absolutely I think that's all tied into that and i think that we've been um fooled into thinking that the earth is a bad place because you know that's what we were taught in religion the world is cursed the earth is cursed yeah. But God created the earth and, you know, mm -hmm. and he intends to redeem it. He yeah, totally. His intention is to redeem it. So thank yeah. you. For, I mean, I thank you for letting me go there and not giving me the. So, <laughs> Never. Uh, no. and, and so I, I guess what I'm asking is for you to be aware of the beauty around you. Uh, and be thankful for it. And you don't necessarily have to speak to your flowers, but I tell you what, I picked a beautiful tomato yesterday and got right happy before I ate it. Um, you know, what I mean? uh, so you can you can at least be grateful for the things that you're consuming or using or observing or appreciating. I want to go back a minute um, to the practice of being thankful for angels. Um, some of you have family members who might not be um, all sold on, on Christianity, but every single one of them has an angel. Every yeah. one of us has an angel, whether we believe in God or don't believe in God. Um, and I, I, I felt this, I felt that there's something out here for some of you, maybe some of you um, uh, boomer age people who are having children, who have children who are having babies, uh, you might on the QT thank their angel when you're with, when you are with that little child, mm -hmm. you, and you know, you're babysitting or you've got the toddlers around or the whatever ages, just be thank, acknowledge the angels that accompany your grandchildren. They may be totally unacknowledged in their home because your kids aren't acknowledging God, but you can acknowledge God and the angels that he has sent mm -hmm to assist these grandbabies of yours through their life. I think there's someone specifically today that that's for, mm -hmm. but I think it's good practice for all of us yeah. um, to um, just be aware that there is a being that is accompanying them and will accompany them for the rest of their life. Uh, this is speaking about angels again, but I think it's important. And it's just a little story. Some of you might have heard this already if you know me, but um, our little, our youngest son, Joshua saw angels. Uh, and uh, 
you know, it, it was just really interesting to watch how that all unfolded in his life. But he started to travel around with us and he would talk about angels at different conferences. Remember when we would take him to Buffalo and Rochester and different places. I remember one time we had been to a church in upstate New York and Josh was talking about angels. We were coming back across the border back to where we lived and Joshua looked at his dad and he said, Dad, like you now, I'm an international minister. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but uh, he saw angels and he brought such comfort to people. So before he started to speak about it, he's just a little dude who sees angels. He's up at my family homestead with us. And my dad was so taken that this little grand dude of his could actually see angels. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to do a couple of angel stories. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he and Josh were doing he was helping my dad dry dishes one one night just little my dad is up here and my dad said josh i just don't understand how you can see them and and josh said well grandpa there's one outside under the tree right there and my dad said josh how do you see it and he said well grandpa it's simple he said you either stop at the glass or you look through it. Oh, wow. You know? wow. And so what Josh was saying is you move past what you immediately see mm -hmm. to see into yeah. the spirit. Yeah. And so uh, my, my uncle was in a big, big building project on the same, in the same area. And so Josh was, um, Josh was out there, I think he was four or five, helping all the grown up men put up a big, utility barn and thought he had just hung the moon and uh my uncle who wasn't a believer said to him hey little dude i hear that you see angels and josh said yep and he's pulling up a bucket of nails and uh my uncle said well if i have any they'd be bad because i'm a bad guy and he said josh stopped and looked at him and said uncle lloyd no everybody has good angels he said uncle lloyd your angel is a good angel and you know that started my uncle and joshua on a relationship to this day joshua's impact on my uncle's life hasn't changed and it started with a little dude acknowledging angels wow. acknowledging what they did and bringing comfort to this sometimes comfort us. That's amazing. And you know, that to me is just wondrous. And we think of what angels do on daily basis. So thank them for keeping your children safe. Thank them for keeping your grandchildren safe for yourself, for being influ helping to um, get you on the road where you're meant to go. Uh, so I think there's that. This is the, um, my last point today. Mm -hmm that I wanted to talk about, um, going back, segueing all the way back to yesterday and um, circling back to the practice of journaling your gratitudes. Do you know, if you want to talk about someone who had a journal of gratitudes, it's David. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because his his psalms are so full of gratitude. But one of the things that David also did is he recognized that he could lament. And what I, because I am pastoral at heart, I recognize that there are laments that many people have. And in many of David's psalms, he started the psalm with a lament, then he found some positive things, mm -hmm. and then sometimes he even went back to laments. Mm -hmm. But yep. in it, he found, in all of his laments, he found a way to be grateful. You know, I, I sometimes say, and I hope he won't be cranky with me, but it wouldn't have been surprised, surprising to find out that David may have been bipolar because he had high highs and low lows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so I, where I want to go with that as we end today is to say, don't worry if you have to record a bunch of laments, 
before you can record your gratitude because David did the very same thing. Uh, and on, on my journals, that's why they're not really meant for anyone to see, on the left-hand side, I will, if I'm stuck and I just can't seem to find my way where I want to be in gratitude, on the left-hand side of my journal, that's where I pour out my process. Sometimes they're laments, sometimes it's what I write down, what I'm struggling through. And that's that side. The right-hand side of my the pages in my journal are all gratitude. So I don't kind of mix them up. I keep them separate, but they're all in the same journal because you at times cannot get to the gratitude part mm -hmm. until you can record yeah. your laments. And when I say laments, I'm not being disparaging about that it is that honest to god sadness that you have inside of you that that is there and it needs to come out and that lament needs to come out as david's did as clearly as the grateful things need to come Amen. out Does that makes sense and i want to speak totally. that to you pastorally as we end this today to understand that you are free to pour out what your heart's sick about just try to find the things that make your heart sing at the same time. Yes. Yes. I'm wow. really glad that you went there because that was one of the things I actually was going to ask, which okay. I guess will be for tomorrow. Cause I often ponder the whole thing of consider it pure joy when you go through all these trials of many kinds and you know, all the negativity and all the pain and all the suffering and all of that and maintaining a, a great a grateful heart in the midst of all of that like how you deal with that so i'm really looking forward to you know if the lord leads that way for us to dive into that i'm sure that yes. some others have that similar question how you process and go through all of that thank you for reminding me and would you remind me about that tomorrow morning and i'll talk yeah. about the process of how you find gratitude through grief Yes, and we'll talk about that because oh, that was okay. one of that one of my post Josh journeys. And talking about yeah. that, about grief, Barbara Simmons did join in, but I guess she'll have to, um, because so she missed your word earlier to her about oh, that. Okay, but uh, perhaps she can listen to the the recording okay. and yeah, get the, the beginning. But happen. we might get back into that yeah. tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I will. I will talk about gratitude through grief tomorrow thank you jack because that was one of the things yeah wow wow another awesome timing it's been absolutely rich again always is hanging with katie and uh -huh. revelating with katie and yeah it's just um yummy for our tummy <laughs> we <laughs> love the way she tastes yes we do <laughs> thank you again for trusting me thank you for allowing me to be a little bit out there and for the invitation and for the relationship oh it's our honor and and what i love is the fact that we didn't this is again coming from a pragmatic spiritual parenting heart that you have that is an airy fairy and got a bunch of platitudes about gratitudes <laughs> yeah. but it's it's bringing it down into a pragmatic life that actually can co-labor with transformation and to me we're not hearing a lot of that that isn't more humanistic more isn't oh. isn't more psycho babble on some level but but in a sense i love how the tapestry of what the father does with you through you of being able to build that tapestry of of being a a, a prophetess that brings pragmatic wisdom so that we can again like i've said before partner with the transformation transformer in us and with us because he's not out there somewhere he's, he's within us and I love the fact that it's taking it out of the unsanctified mystical realm where it might be more prophetic fantasy or solical kind of stuff. And, you know, there's always mixture that we're always working through, whatever, whatever. But I, what I love about it is that you're bringing clarity to 
a revelatory community. All of our sensitivities, all of our all of our feels and all that other stuff, everything that's going on that we all are as spiritually sensitive revelators mm -hmm. soaring and, and, and exploring and everything that's been awakened and permission to, you know, to go into the heavens and all our stuff. That's wonderful. But if we miss this realm, if we miss our pragmatic thing, that's where we go off and be falling. What, Do what Bob would say, you go into the ditch on either side, right? In a sense, we can either deny all this stuff and go into that ditch or we get out there and we're so, um, we're so in the realm of prophetic fantasy and it, and it probably is only a lot of it, our own, um, soulish desires, nothing evil per se, but is it really kingdom beneficial mm -hmm. producing life, producing transformation? And that's what I love about this is that this didn't go into a great big prophetic airy fairy kind of a thing, but it, but it paved a path and permissioning those that have ears to hear, permissioning to be a pragmatic, prophetic revelator on earth as it is in heaven and the merging. And I'm seeing the beginning of a tapestry being built with the revelatory community where there's the heaven and earth. What's it look like? Well, let's explore and soar together, but not out here in the, and, and I'm not against it. I love, trust me, I love all that stuff when it's, when it's God breathing, but the authentic mystics were completely engaged with earth as, and, and heaven at the same time. And so we love that big time. So, oh. yay. Thank you. Uh and don't forget, people, to ask the questions. What was it again, um, Jacqueline, about asking yeah. questions for tomorrow? Yeah, to just please post any questions that you have. I'm going to go through the chat afterwards, and I will pull out um, the questions. And um, Katie, maybe I'll send them to you. Would yeah. you please in advance? Because, yes. Uh, yep. <laughs> it's a non-coffee morning. I want to be sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes so please feel free to post your questions in the chat and katie will expertly answer them all tomorrow yeah and and yeah uh, yes in her infinite wisdom and also you was that a bee yes peacemakers uh oh <laughs> the bee in the butt um you peacemakers you know post post a fresh comment of your own what were your what were two takeaways that that popped out in in this session yeah. and if you didn't do it in the last session do it in that one too it's like you know just what are your takeaways <clears throat> because we don't want this to be just you know us preaching at you speaking to you in a sense right. um how it, how it works is that um it becomes more yours when you engage, when you engage with what, what were your take takeaways? So it just activates a different and a deeper aspect of just hearing and, and stuff. So yes, blessings on everybody. Make sure you all come back now, watch the replay because there are some interesting nuggets we know. And, um, we will see you back here at one Eastern tomorrow and live long and prosper. <laughs> Amen, amen. Love amen, you guys. Amen. Bless you guys. <laughs>